Strikes are happening across Hollywood and artificial intelligence is clearly playing a role. The Writers Guild of America strike has entered its third week. They are seeking better pay and other improved conditions. Now united with writers, striking after contract negotiations collapsed. Hollywood on strike, a historic shutdown just hours ago, around 160,000 performers. Among other things, sag after the largest actors union in the country is demanding protections from artificial intelligence. The truth is, AI is going to transform Hollywood. The entire industry is going to be built on top of artificial intelligence. It will be embedded into the cameras, the writing software, the editing tools. But here's what's important to remember. While AI and technological evolution is inevitable in Hollywood, as it is in any other industry, the actual path that it takes isn't. We can shape that. We can steer it. But it requires us to lean into technology, to learn about the future, so we can actively move towards the futures we want and pivot away from the futures that we don't want. Because when you think about the internet and streaming, on the one hand, the innovation has been amazing for viewers. We can watch more high quality content than ever before. But at the same time, the economic wins from streaming weren't shared equally or fairly. So how can we, in this moment, use foresight to try to unpack where AI could evolve in Hollywood so more voices get a chance to shape it. In this episode, I'm going to talk about what could be technically feasible from the actual technology's point of view. I'm going to paint different scenarios of how things could evolve, and none of these have to be the Hollywood that we, went, we end up in, but I wanna make sure different creatives, writers, actors, as you're in this process of rebuilding contracts, that you understand how the technology is evolving and how studios may be thinking of things and the types of things you could hedge against or capitalize on as an opportunity for yourself. But before we dive into the future, we have to understand the technologies that are shaping it. In particular, generative AI, the one causing all of the drama in news cycles. So generative AI algorithms generate content that's indistinguishable from the human generated content they were trained on. So if you train them on text, they can generate human-like sounding text. If you train them on music, they can generate songs. If you give them an example of somebody's voice, they can clone that voice. And while AI video generators aren't that good right now, over time, we'll be able to generate longer form, high quality videos. So if we're to zoom in on AI when it comes to writing, could a text generating system like ChatGPT or maybe even Google's Dramatron specifically designed for, for writers, could it write the next Oscar winning phantom thread? Well, it actually could, and it would be terrible. The systems we have today, they're not good at generating meaningful content in long form and developing a character arc over you know, an hour and a half movie. So at this point in time, writers' minds are still largely the holy grail, but that doesn't mean writers don't have to adapt alongside technology. You have to view AI much more like the typewriter or the computer, a tool to allow you to move faster, take more creative risks. I mean, imagine training an AI system on all of your specific scripts and your past writing samples and essentially creating an AI mini writer's room or teammate that can help you move through writer's fatigue faster, writer's block, can help you ideate on plot lines in an entirely different way. And you have to remember that for writers, the next generation of writers are going to be leaning into these tools. It will be how they learn from the beginning. So I think it's important that all writers figure out how to lean into them. You can also imagine that studios are going to try to create their own best AI script writing software. So it's really important for unions, especially writers unions, that you make sure your writers have access to the best script writing software out there. So we can really level the playing field against studios so there isn't some magical advantage. It also means the value of a writer's script to train AI, it's really, you can't really even put a price on it. So it's really important that writers get the right to own and train AI systems on their own work. I don't know how this works retrospectively for the scripts that have already been sold to studios, but from an intellectual property standpoint, even though I'm not a lawyer, I don't write contracts, it seems fair that those words belong to the people who wrote them and that studios shouldn't just be making these AI systems off of the intellectual property and the ideas um, of the hardworking writers that, that went into them. But in the future, in the near future, where are we likely to see studios try to lean into AI in the next couple of years? 
for shows and content that have a lot of training examples, think like a CSI, and the shows are quite formulaic, there's a pattern that can be followed, those are the types of areas I would say studios um, are probably zooming into when it comes to AI script generating and where AI could potentially play a role. Now when we look further out, it's not just text generating systems that writers need to be thinking about. You also need to be thinking about video generators because there is a world, and again, this doesn't have to be the future we end up in, but one, there is a world where video generators get better. So on the one hand, as you're drafting your scripts, you can see in real time examples of how those scenes could play out, uh, which could be very inspiring and very exciting. It also means in a world where video generators get really good, it could be possible for writers to generate episodes and sequels and things themselves in a computer, which means we could see the emergence of new subscription economies for writers where we subscribe directly to our favorite writers. Writers are able to decouple themselves a little bit from studios and bring content to life themselves. We could also imagine a world where things kind of go in a few different directions, where there's writers that are maybe more aligned with studios uh, and other writers that use video generators to bring things to life themselves um, and people kind of subscribe accordingly. And again, this doesn't have to be where we end up. And of course, this has a lot of implications for acting, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. But these are the different ways that technology can evolve. So it's important to think about that going forward. It also means for writers, when you think about any type of generative AI system, there is a world where if viewers don't want maybe a show or a movie to end, potentially in the future, they could use an AI system to generate more episodes or more sequels so shows and movies don't have to end. So maybe, for example, uh, a viewer subscribes to Lord of the Rings as a franchise, and then in that subscription, you can use the Lord of the Rings AI generator to generate another sequel or a prequel, and you would want to make sure writers in your contract um, if that's something that you would allow, an AI adapted version, but you know, for the right price, um, that you've covered that as it is. It also can present an opportunity specifically for writers. So when you are building out your characters, I know that you usually write a little backstory on characters that the viewers don't see, but I think the actors tend to read them to get into that character. There's an opportunity, for example, for writers to use their video generators to bring those backstories to life for their viewers. So again, another opportunity for viewers to align with their, with their favorite writers, um, learn about the different arcs of the show, the different characters further. If you want the backstory on Luke Skywalker, uh, you could subscribe to this writer and learn more through their AI video generator. Again, this doesn't have to be where we go, but these are the different opportunities and the different ways the technology could evolve going forward. It also means that you could write a movie for one age group, say a rated R movie, and you could use an AI video generator to edit it for different age groups. So maybe you write the explicit, you shoot the explicit, and AI edits it. So there's a family version and a PG-13 version, so all different groups of people can watch it which means again, writers, you're thinking in your contracts, if AI is used to adapt your screenplay in any way that you get fairly compensated each and every time. So for example, if a, if a viewer uses an AI generator to generate a sequel or a prequel or hear that backstory, you're getting the appropriate amount of you know, fair compensation each and every time and the fair credit and all of that. So that's just an example of where things could go when it comes to writing. Again, these don't have to be the futures that we end up in, but you can imagine a world where, where this is what technology allows us to create. Now, when it comes to the future of acting, I mean, AI is already transforming acting. It's been used to de-age actors or to render deceased actors digitally back into movies or even just their voice. And I want to show you a pretty incredible AI editing example. Look on this stupid tower in the middle of nowhere and I don't blame you and now we're stuck on this stupid stuck on this stupid freaking and just from an exciting standpoint you can imagine the way movies and shows are going to be edited using AI just to expand all that could be possible now that really the sky is the limit when you can create backdrops and things with artificial intelligence but when it comes to things like digital twins and AI powered actors are we likely to see that in the future? My hunch is 
probably. I mean, we already are. When it comes to, for example, athletes being in certain commercials, if they're unavailable, they'll be digitally rendered into commercials. That's already happening today. And so you could imagine in the near future that actors create digital twins of themselves, but for more so commercial projects. So maybe it's a Razor commercial halfway across the world. You don't need to pour your heart and soul into it. Uh, you could just send your digital twin. Uh, or maybe you want to be in a certain project, but you can't because you're already committed to one. Is there a world where maybe your digital twin could be rendered into that? Perhaps, and again, digital twins might be something that viewers don't like or want and actors don't want, but it is more, it's gonna be more than possible from a technology side of things. So this means a few things. On the one hand, actors of course should fully own their digital likeness through and through. I mean, there shouldn't have even be a debate there. Actors 100% not only own their digital likeness, but get to sign off before and after it's used. Uh, because on the one hand, you could imagine the future of editing. And say in post-production, the crew's like, this scene was terrible. Instead of bringing everybody back to set, you could license the actor's digital twin and make some tweaks that way, which could be great, super convenient. But the actor needs to be able to sign off on how their digital twin is used. Because you could imagine, what if the team edited the, the, the lines and the scene to the point where the actor doesn't recognize it? and maybe wouldn't have agreed to shoot the movie in the first place had that been in their original script. So really important that you have full control. It's also important that actors get to own the historical content that they've, been, that they've made that's probably being used to train the video generators of the future. I mean, you can imagine a world where a studio maybe uses trained an AI system on all of Meryl Streep's past performances. And I mean, she's the goat of all goats. I think we're all trying to be Meryl Streep no matter what industry we work in. But what if they train an AI system on Meryl Streep, but the AI character they generate doesn't look like Meryl, doesn't talk like her, so we don't know it's her, but it in some ways moves through the way her acting does. I mean, that's entirely unfair. And so I think, I know intellectual property in AI is something that is being sorted out across the board in creative industries and in law, all of it. But to me, that's, that's something that we don't want to lose and just kind of collapse intellectual property to the ground um, because I don't think that that's how art thrives. In terms of where things could go uh, when it comes to digital twins, there is a potential world, and again, we don't necessarily, we don't have to have this world, but it's possible. When you look at how technology like Netflix, the internet, streaming, uh, created new subscription economies, similar to how I talked about it in the world of writing, where you may be able to subscribe to writers, there could be a world where we subscribe to actors. So if digital, acting and digital twins become um, more of the norm, maybe viewers could subscribe to their favorite actors and they could be digitally rendered into the films that the viewers are, are watching. And again, this doesn't have to be what happens, but I wanna make sure actors in their contracts are understanding all of the different ways things could evolve and hedging or capitalizing, capitalizing on that ahead of time. And it also means for actors, as I had mentioned with writers, if there is a world where people can use video generators to continue to generate new episodes or new movies, or for example, as I said with writers, maybe the show Succession, you as a viewer want to learn more about Shiv, maybe she was your favorite character, uh, and you could use, you could pay a subscription to the Succession franchise and use their video generator to get the backstory on Shiv and it generates something. And maybe you as a, as a viewer can have a bit of creative control in, in editing or modifying uh, on the app what you want to see. The person who played Shiv in Succession should absolutely be getting royalties each and every time AI is used to generate that character in a different format. Absolutely. So that's something that again needs to be considered in contracts. That even if AI is used to adapt content or, or modify content or give viewers more creative control in the future, that everybody is still being fairly compensated for that in perpetuity, uh, not this kind of like one-time sign-off that has happened kind of with streaming. I don't think that that works out for people and I don't think that that's very fair. And there are of course all sorts of ethical challenges with digital twins and AI powered acting. I mean, on the one hand, for extras and background actors, that's probably where you get your big break into Hollywood or where you start to build experience. And I can imagine studios are probably gonna try to lean on AI here. I mean, they already do a lot of CGI for background imaging and for like, if you see scenes with a bunch of extras in the background, sometimes that is already CGI. And we can imagine now with AI, it's just gonna become easier to automate those types of things and, and to animate and bring 
kind of background actors and extras to life. So that's gonna be a challenge. And I mean, Tom Hanks a few weeks ago went viral for saying he can continue to act after he passes away using his digital twin, which is true and which could be so interesting. And we've already done that with some actors. But at the same time, is it gonna make it so we don't make space for new actors because we just keep bringing back our favorite people and they get to star in the movies and it's a lot cheaper for studios to do that anyway. And we just kind of cycle through the same characters over and over. Um, that's a possibility in the future and I don't think a future that we would want to necessarily walk towards. At the same time, however, using AI characters and digital twins, it could open up space for different types of filmmakers to come onto the scene. So maybe there's an indie creator that would never get seen by a big studio, but they have amazing ideas, maybe a brilliant script, but they can't afford the biggest budget for actors. Maybe now they could license an actor's digital twin so they could get a really amazing actor, but their digital twin, the actor doesn't have time for the for the full in-person version, but maybe they'll license their digital twin for a few scenes. Um, and that could open up creative pathways for new voices. Um, and maybe for different types of storytelling. So maybe actors or maybe filmmakers and people that are creating content can lean more on AI to, to generate you know, certain scripts uh, or to generate certain characters from scratch and just do more of the creative process in their computer. Uh, and so we start to see different, more storytelling and different types of storytelling come to life with artificial intelligence. So you can kind of see all of the different ways in some ways that can help new types of creativity, but it could be very challenging in other ways. And again, none of this is set in stone. These are all what could be technically feasible, but at the end of the day, we get to decide what future we want to walk towards and what future we're comfortable with uh, and what future we think is most fair. And finally, I'll say, when it comes to contracts and the future, I know that there's a lot of focus on studios, but there is a world when we think about disruption that all different industry players get disrupted, right? So if you look at streaming, it transformed the whole industry and there were new players that surfaced. So when you think about how AI could disrupt the industry, it should, you shouldn't bank entirely on the current superpowers maintaining power going forward. There might be new systems, new types of companies, new ways creativity and art in the form of movies and TV get brought to life. So you have to think about it in, in that way as well. And I know that this probably seems like a lot, um, but I also want to remind us that entertainment has always been built on top of technology. It was the invention of the camera that led to the creation of movies, which led to Hollywood. Uh, and it was television that inspired Hollywood to, to adapt again into the world of take home movies and all of that. So the industry has adapted time and time again. I know when it comes to AI and for many industries that are going to be disrupted by AI, things do really feel quite different. But as I said in the beginning, while technological evolution in Hollywood, it's inevitable. The path it takes isn't. The more we lean into it, the more we learn about it, the better we can steer the future and the better we can shape it. And regardless of what you believe to be true about the future, the best thing we can do is prepare for it.